This video will give a brief introduction to the Luftronics Orchestrator. The Orchestrator is used to plan three-dimensional paths for drones in aircraft inspection. To start the process, we click on New, add at least one drone, and then add an aircraft to inspect. The Orchestrator has built-in support for most commercial types of aircraft. To start generating an inspection path, we, we enter the interactive editing mode. This mode allows us to set a path for the drone to conduct the inspection. By default, the path is set so that it snaps into a preset distance from the inspected object. This is done to guarantee a consistent angle and field of vision during inspections. As we create the waypoints for the drone to visit, the orchestrator automatically generates a map of the inspected areas based on the path of the drone, the camera angle, and the size of the lens. This visited area, also known as the coverage guarantee, is marked in green. If at any time in the planning process we make a mistake and need to delete previously set points, we simply mark them with a mouse click and then press delete. At any given time during flight planning, we can run a quick simulation to ensure the flight path is exactly what we thought it would be. This simulation shows not only the path of the UAV, but also the camera orientation and field of vision. As previously mentioned, the distance to the inspected object is set to a default value that is kept in a configuration file. This preset value is actually important to ensure that the camera is at the exact same distance to the inspected object at all times in order to guarantee that all the collected images have the same ground sampling distance, illumination and camera angle. If we wanted to take an existing scan plan and edit it, we could simply extend its coverage area by marking all the points on the side and moving them. As you can see, the coverage area has been updated automatically. If we were to move only a single yellow waypoint without moving the corresponding white lookout point, the result is a little bit different. To check the result, we can run another simulation flight. At the first waypoint, we notice immediately that the angle is not the same as before. This is because we moved the waypoint but did not change the area we want the camera to inspect at this time. The system will therefore try to compensate as much as possible by interpolating the flight path and its look at points to find the best possible compromise. After starting with the camera pointing left, it then swings to look at a 90 degree angle and then swings further to look slightly to the right. This happened because both waypoints were moved outward without moving their look at points. Since in this case it was a result of a deliberate mistake, we will correct the error by clicking on the white look at point and then editing the setting for the angle to, to surface manually. Once we set it back to 90 degrees, we once again have a consistent camera angle. There are different options for editing points manually. One we have already seen is to set the angle while edi editing the look at point. Doing so will keep the look at point locked in place and will move the waypoint. If we instead click on the waypoint and move it, we will see the angle to surface setting change in the editing panel on the right. Alternatively, we can also keep the waypoint static and move the look at point. This 
would also result in a changed angle to surface setting and it could be necessary in order to compensate for lighting conditions or for some other reasons. When moving a look at point it is worth noting that they will always remain locked to the surface of the inspected object and cannot be moved off of it. Similarly to editing the horizontal layout of waypoints, there may be reasons to change the vertical orientation of the waypoints. For example, we may want to create either more or less overlap in the images we collect. The best way to do this is to mark both waypoints and both look at points that belong to a horizontal path segment and move them in a vertical direction until we have the, the desired outcome. When we do this, the coverage area is automatically updated, which makes it easier for us to ensure that we do not lose coverage of any area of the scanned object. Now it's time to take a look at some of the built-in safety features in the Luftronics Orchestrator. The first one is the area of operations, also known as the bounding area. This is a zone by default a rectangle, but it can be set as any arbitrary polygon that sets the outside limits for operations of UAVs under the control of the Luftronics Orchestrator. If a Luftronics UAV flies to the border of this bounding area, it will not be able to continue across the border and instead wait for new instructions or return to the nearest landing zone. Errors in the flight path that would cross this border will also be detected by the orchestrator and prevent an upload of such a faulty flight plan to any UAV. The bounding area can be edited similar to editing the flight path by dragging single points or groups of points with a mouse. A second safety feature built into the orchestrator is the notion of a safety zone. Safety zones are areas inside the bounding area but protected from overflight. Typically this is done because the protected area holds equipment that we do not want to get too close to or that should never be positioned under a flying object. In our example we have placed an object into the bounding area and then we created a safety zone around it. The safety zone can again be set up as any arbitrary polygon and it generates a floor-to-ceiling no-fly zone for the Luftronics UAVs. As with the limits of the bounding area, any UAV getting too close to the limit of a safety zone will hold still and wait for a new instruction or look for the nearest landing area. Luftronics UAVs have built-in obstacle detection and avoidance mechanisms for unexpected obstacles entering the area of operations. However, safety zones are meant to keep track of known obstacles, including the inspected object. Known no-fly zones can be visualized with a grid of areas of limits for any flight path. This includes the safety zone we have just set up but it also includes the aircraft we are inspecting, with an important difference. While regular safety areas are strict no-fly zones, the inspected aircraft only has a protective buffer zone in all directions. This is necessary to allow for overflights during crown inspections. Other than that, both, buffer, both the buffer around the aircraft and the safety area behave in exactly the same way. Another interesting safety feature is the notion of a dedicated safe landing area. In this current example, we have a single landing area at the nose of the aircraft. When we visualize the safe landing strategy in the simulation flight, we see a white line drawn as the best possible route to the nearest safe landing area from the current position of the UAV. This line takes into account all the known obstacles registered in the Luftronics Orchestrator and it will plot the correct path to avoid any of these known obstacles. Proper safety planning will include setting up multiple safe landing areas to ensure short paths in case of an in-flight emergency like a low battery or a motor failure. Once we have a second safe landing area set up, 
The simulation will show a switch of the white emergency path once we get close enough to the second area. This is shown by the white line switching its destination as soon as the path travels far enough along the side of the aircraft. If we move the second area to the other side of the aircraft, the path will automatically adjust. However, it now needs to take into account that the adjusted path includes a detour over the crown of the aircraft to avoid any collision. This is enabled by the buffer zone marked in green a little bit earlier. Just as a reminder, Luftronics UAV can detect any obstacle in their flight path at flight time using the built-in sonar equipment. The behavior in this case is similar to avoiding a previously known obstacle. The main difference is that, it, that known obstacles help us pre-compute emergency strategies for faster operation during in-flight emergencies. This pre-calculation works by using the buffer zones around the inspected objects marked here in green. In addition, any safety area will be treated as a no-fly zone for the purpose of pre-calculated emergency strategies. When importing any new inspection object, the buffer zones are calculated automatically without having to do anything on the behalf of the flight planner. Now that we have everything in place, we are able to take the UAV on a test flight. To do this, we switch to the flight console. This gives us a full operations dashboard for the inspection flights. In this case, we will not use a hardware UAV, but instead the simulated UAV. We upload the flight plan to the UAV, initialize the coordinate system and arm the UAV. It will now run its pre-flight checks and then be ready for takeoff. Now that all the pre-flight work is done, we can ask the UAV to take off. The red line marks the current flight path and we can watch the navigation systems in the panel to the right. All systems, including safety systems, are listed as OK. On the left panel, the takeoff checks are listed as having succeeded and the UAV is now ready to execute its flight path. The UAV is currently in a hover position waiting for the instruction to execute its mission. When we click on Start Mission, it will build a flight plan to the starting point of the mission and then execute it. As we can see, the UAV still keeps its camera in the default position while it is approaching the entry point for the inspection. At this point, we can monitor progress on screen, or in case we wanted to temporarily take control manually, we'd be able to do so with a built-in flight controller or with an external remote control unit. As the UAV is approaching the starting point, it will turn its camera towards the inspected object. All of the flight plan so far has been auto-generated based on the starting point for the inspection plan and the origin position of the UAV in the takeoff zone. The UAV has now reached the starting point of the inspection plan and has started its data collection activities. This means it is executing the previously created flight plan that has been stored on the UAV during the first step when we uploaded the plan. Flight plans generated in the Luftronics Orchestrator are meant for automatic execution by UAVs that are capable of full autonomy. The dashboard we are looking at is not needed for flight execution and only serves as a monitoring tool and for emergency controls. If we had witnessed an emergency condition, for example, as a result of someone erroneously opening the hangar doors and starting to pull the aircraft out, we could initiate a safe landing procedure right now by clicking on the Land Safely button. Doing so will initiate the procedure we had prepared earlier 
by creating the two safe landing areas. Since we have just passed the area that would have triggered a landing in the zone opposite the aircraft, the UAV will choose the area at the nose of the aircraft instead. It will choose the closest route that is still outside the buffer zone around the aircraft. If at any point we decide that we'd rather initiate an immediate landing, we can click on the Land Immediately button to initiate an instant landing rather than trying to reach the official landing zone first. Once the UAV has reached the ground, it should be disarmed so that it can safely be approached and stored. One final feature of the orchestrator is coordinate system transformation. Since there is no guarantee that aircraft are always parked in the exact same position in a hangar, there is a need to adjust an existing flight plan for a given aircraft to a different position. If our aircraft, in this example, had been brought in with a few meters offset and rotated by a few degrees, we'd have to adjust the flight plan before we could reuse it ag again. The good news is we can simply transform the original flight plan to match the aircraft position and then upload the transformed plan to the UAV without having to recreate it. We hope you enjoyed the quick overview of the most important fe flight planning features in the Luftronics Orchestrator. If you have any questions, please send an email to info at lufttronics.com.